The current, the current route. The only, the current route was formerly a detour around the damaged portion during the repairs and became a permanent route in 1993. Mounds of dirt were placed at both ends of the former route, effectively blocking the road. Pedestrian traffic is still possible due to a small opening about two feet wide at the north side of the road. The underground fire is still burning and may continue to do so for 250 years. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania did not renew the relocation contract at the end of 2005. The last remaining house on Locust Avenue was demolished in September 2007. It was notable for a period for the five chimney-like support buttresses along each of two opposite sides of the house. The house had formerly been supported by a row of adjacent buildings. Another house with similar buttresses was visible from the northern side of the cemetery, just north of the burning, partially subsumed hillside. Residents John Kamarniski and John Lakaitis, Jr. were evicted in May and July 2009, respectively. In May 2009, the remaining residents mounted another legal effort to reverse the 1992 eminent domain claim. In 2010, only five homes remained as state officials tried to vacate the remaining residents and demolish what was left of the town. In March 2011, a federal judge refused to issue an injunction that would have stopped the condemnation. The borough council still had regular meetings as of 2011. It was reported that the town's highest bill at the meeting reported on came from PPL, a power utility, at $92 and the town's budget was in the black. In February 2012, the Commonwealth Court ruled that a declaration of taking could not be reopened or set aside on the basis that the purpose for the condemnation no longer exists. Seven people, including the borough council president, had filed suit claiming the condemnation was no longer needed because the underground fire had moved and the air quality in the borough was the same as that in Lancaster. In October 2013, the remaining residents settled their lawsuit, receiving $218,000 in compensation for the value of their homes, along with $131,500 to settle additional claims, and the right to stay in their homes for the rest of their lives. Time Capsule the town's residents and former residents decided to open a time capsule buried in 1966 a few years earlier than planned after someone had attempted to unearth and steal the capsule in May 2014. The capsule was not scheduled to be opened until 2016. Items found in the footlocker-sized capsule, which had been inundated with about 12 inches of water, included a miner's helmet, a miner's lamp, some coal, a Bible, local souvenirs, and a pair of bloomers signed by the men of Centralia in 1966. Mineral Rights Several current and former Centralia residents believe the state's eminent domain claim was a plot to gain the mineral rights to the anthracite coal beneath the borough. Residents have asserted its value to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars, although the exact amount of coal is not known. This theory is based on the municipality laws of the state. According to state law, when the municipality can no longer form a functioning municipal government, that is, when there are no longer any residents, the borough legally ceased to exist. At that point, the mineral rights, which are owned by the borough of Centralia would revert to the ownership of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Demographics 2000 Census There were 10 households, out of which As of the census of 2000, there were 21 people, 10 households, and 7 families residing in the borough. The population density was 87.5 people per square mile. There were 16 housing units at an average density of 66.7 people per square mile. The racial makeup of the borough was 100% white. There were 10 households, out of which one had children under the age of 18 living with them. Five were married couples living together. One had a female householder with no husband present, and three were non. Families three of the households were made up of individuals, and one had someone living alone who was 65 years of age or older. The average household size was 2.10, and the average family size was 2.57. In the borough the population was spread out, with one resident under the age of 18, one from 18 to 24, four from 25 to 44, seven from 45 to 64 and eight who were 65 years of age or older. The median age was 62 years. There were 10 females and 11 males with one male under the age of 18. The median income for a household in the borough was $23,750.
and the median income for a family was $28,750. The per capita income for the borough was $16,083. None of the population was below the poverty line. 2010 Census As of the census of 2010 there were 10 people, 5 households, and 3 families residing in the borough. The population density was 42 people per square mile. There were 6 housing units at an average density of 0.4 units per square mile. The racial makeup of the borough was 100% white. Of the 5 households, none had children under the age of 18. Two were married couples living together. One had a female householder with no spouse present, and two were non-families. One of those non-family households was an individual, and none had someone living alone who was 65 years of age or older. The average household size was 2.0 persons, and the average family size was 2.33 persons. There were no residents under the age of 18, one age 25-29, one age 50-54, one age 55-59. 4 aged 60-64, 2 aged 70-74, and 1 aged 80-84. The median age was 62.5 years, and there were 5 females and 5 males in total. Public Services The borough is served by a small group of volunteer firefighters operating one fire engine that is more than 30 years old. The fire company ambulance was given to the nearby Wilburton Fire Company in Cunningham Township in 2012. The Centralia Municipal Building still stands, along with its attached fire station garage. By the early 2010s, the building had fallen into disrepair, but new siding was installed in 2012. The building hosts the annual Centralia Cleanup Day, when volunteers collect illegally dumped trash in the area. Although past cleanup days avoided fire impacted areas, the 2018 cleanup included areas around the landfill and the abandoned section of PA Route 61 since nicknamed the Graffiti Highway. The town's Ukrainian Catholic Church remains in use and attracts worshippers from surrounding towns including people who were once residents of the town. A geological survey found there was solid rock, not coal, under the church so it is not in danger of collapse due to the fire. In popular culture, Centralia has been used as a model for many different fictional ghost towns and manifestations of hell. Prominent examples include Dean Kuntz's Strange Highways and David Wellington's Vampire Zero. Screenwriter Roger Avery researched Centralia while working on the screenplay for the Silent Hill film adaptation. The 1982 PBS documentary Centralia Mine Fire contains interviews with residents and relates the story of the mine fire. The 1987 film Made in USA opens in Centralia and the surrounding coal region of Pennsylvania. The 2007 documentary The Town That Was is about the history of the town and its current and former residents. Centralia had a segment entitled City on Fire on the Travel Channel television series America Declassified which aired in 2013. The Centralia story was explored in the documentary segment Dying Embers from public radio station WNYC's Radiolab. American History Comedy Podcast, The Dollop did an episode in 2015 discussing Centralia. See also References Further reading External links